Welcome to engineering.com. My name is Michael Alba and this is Hardware Review. Today we're going to be looking at the Asus ProArt Studiobook 1. Now there are two notable things about this computer. The first is that this is the first mobile workstation to ship with the Nvidia Quadro RTX 6000 graphics card. That's Nvidia's top of the line mobile GPU. The second notable thing about this computer is its price tag. It's $10,000. Is the price worth it? Well, let's take a look. Today's hardware review is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com slash TV today. Before we talk about the performance of the ASUS ProArt StudioBook 1, and I'm just going to call it the ProArt for the purposes of this video, let's talk about the design, because the ProArt has a pretty unique one. Most mobile workstations have all the components, the CPU, GPU, RAM, etc underneath the keyboard in the chassis. The ProArt has all those components behind the display, and it does it for a very good reason, because the RTX 6000 graphics card takes up a lot of power, and things that use a lot of power generate a lot of heat. In order to dissipate that heat properly, ASUS has added this interesting feature where when you open the ProArt, this casing behind the display opens up with it, creating a gap all around the edge. That gap is perfect for air to come in, go over all the processors, and then come out at the top. This design enables the ProArt to dissipate up to 300 watts of heat, which is necessary because this thing ships with a 300 watt power adapter. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. But this unique design has some trade-offs. For one thing, it makes this computer a bit top-heavy. So when you're using it on your lap, it's doing that thing where it rocks back and forth a little bit. You can never quite find the right position for it. On the plus side, since the processors are behind the display, all the heat is behind the display. And when it's sitting on your lap, it doesn't feel like a stovetop on there. Another consequence of this design is that the ports are all on the top half of the display as well. There's two on either side. On the right, there's two USB-C with Thunderbolt 3. On the left, there's one USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 and one power port. Now, you might be wondering why didn't they just put four USB-C on there and just charge it with that? It's because USB-C can only deliver up to 100 watts of power, and again, this thing takes 300 watts. All right, so let's get around to the performance of the ProArt. As you might expect, this thing has the best graphical performance of any mobile workstation we've looked at, because it's got the best GPU of any mobile workstation we've looked at. In graphical benchmarks, the Quadra RTX 6000 outperforms the next best GPU, the Quadra RTX 5000, by 50% and sometimes even higher. The biggest difference you'll find is on GPU compute tasks and DirectX performance in general. Anything that's just tapping into the GPU and the GPU alone, you're going to see a big difference. But for other tasks, like CPU rendering, the ASUS ProArt doesn't quite max out the same way it does for graphics. This thing has a pretty decent CPU in it. It's an Intel Core i9-9980HK. That's a good CPU, but I've seen it outperformed in lesser spec CPUs and much less expensive laptops that are just a little bit newer. And same with the memory and the disk. This thing has a lot of memory, 64 gigabytes, and a lot of storage, one terabyte, but the memory and disk tests don't do anything special either. So when you look at graphics alone, this thing knocks it out of the park. But if you're looking at the system level performance, yeah, it's doing good, but maybe not as good as you'd expect from a laptop that you're paying $10,000 for. While that GPU does really well at graphical tasks, it's important to note that you're only going to get that full performance if you keep this machine plugged in. It has to be connected to that 300 watt power adapter to get the full power that it can use to do those graphical tasks. For example, when you're doing a render and you have this thing plugged in, the GPU is consuming about 200 watts of power, a lot of power for a mobile GPU. But if you don't have this plugged in, the best you're going to see is about 45 watts. That's a difference of about four, and it shows. The rendering times will take about four times longer if you don't have this plugged in. So it's just something to keep in mind about a mobile workstation. It's not really as mobile as the name suggests because to really take advantage of it, it has to be tethered to an outlet. Speaking of that power adapter, here it is. Pretty small for 300 watts. And that's because ASUS designed this power adapter with gallium nitride transistors rather than the more conventional silicon. And that means that not only can you fit more of them into a smaller space, hence a compact size, but it's also more efficient than silicon power supplies. In general, I liked using the ProArt, but I found the experience a bit frustrating at times. For example, there'd be odd glitches like 
The webcam never seemed to work, and I'm not sure why. And certain applications never opened, and I'm not sure why. And sometimes it wouldn't turn on, and I'm not sure why. And sometimes it wouldn't turn off, and I'm not sure why. I mean, this wasn't happening to me every single day, but there were enough odd things that happened enough of the time that I got a bit frustrated. Again, keeping in mind that this is a $10,000 computer. You don't expect those sort of imperfections when you're paying that much money. Now, there could be solutions to all these problems, and it could just be with our review unit, but I had to note them down. Other than that, it is a really nice computer. It's got a really great 15.6 inch 4K display. It's not a touchscreen. I tend to like touchscreens, and this doesn't have one. The keyboard is really nice, but it's very shallow, which is not my personal preference. I like a touch more depth, but it is a nice keyboard. And it has a great fingerprint sensor in there as well, which is probably the best fingerprint sensor I've ever used on any mobile workstation. And it took me a long time to realize it was there too, because it blends in seamlessly with the rest of the keys, despite having a fingerprint sensor icon on it, which I just assumed was a mistake. The trackpad is as good as any Windows 10 trackpad that you'll find nowadays, so no complaints there. Overall, this computer is not for everyone. In fact, I don't think it's for many. It's got a huge price tag, $10,000 in case I haven't said it enough, and it's got great graphical performance, but it doesn't have phenomenal system performance, at least not phenomenal for that price tag. The price to performance ratio just always moves in the wrong direction. So unless you're the kind of person who really needs the bleeding edge graphical performance, has that $10,000 to spend, doesn't mind having to keep this thing tethered to a wall outlet to get that performance, I don't know why you would buy this computer. There's really good mobile workstations out there for 30 or 40% of the price. And I'd say those probably make a lot more sense for the vast majority of users. But I'm sure there is a certain type of user for whom the ASUS ProArt Studio Book 1 is perfect. And if that's you, drop us a line in the comments because I wanna know that you actually exist. That's about it for our overview. If you want the full detailed review, we have one up on engineering.com. It's either underneath this video or somewhere close by. Give it a read if you're interested in the full review. Thanks for watching. Now go do something else.